What up, party people? What up, YouTube? This is Chef. New Zealand Murder History Podcast. And I'm coming to you on location. And when I say on location, I mean I'm coming to you from the crime scene. See this bloke here? Well, that's Kevin O'Loughlin. Kevin O'Loughlin, he went into Nelson for a night out. He thought he'd get on the piss, have a good time, get his groove on, maybe meet some ladies. I don't know what Kevin was thinking. But on all accounts, he was on the good buzz that night. He wasn't looking for trouble. The trouble found him, all right. See over here, that's Buxton Square. So yeah, the dude walked through Buxton Square from the other side. This is the Hardy Street entrance. And he got stuck somewhere up here, pretty much on the corner. Well, just before the corner, but then he collapsed there on the corner. Outside that bar. It was a long time ago. The bar wasn't there. It was a Dick Smith or some other thing, I'm not really sure. And that's, um, that's where it ended. Yep. And all over what? We don't know. Because this is an unsolved cold case from 1993. So let's set this camera up. And see if we can't figure this out. Maybe I'll even... Yeah, let's, let's, let's aim the shot over here. With any luck, the sun doesn't... Um, doesn't cut my phone off. Sometimes it does. But hey, what can you do? I'll give it a go anyway. All right. This is Chef, New Zealand Murder History Podcast. My show is not suitable for children. Kids, click off. Anyone suffering from PTSD, also click off and seek support from your GP or call one of the many 0800 numbers available. My show is just for educational purposes and to let the public know. Oh, let New Zealand public and anyone else who cares to watch know that this case is still unsolved and it's likely people out there know what happened so anyone who knows something saw something or even just had a beer with kevin o'loughlin at horatio's club on may the 1st 1993 go and tell police any leads could be relevant the number for the new zealand police non-emergency is 105 or you can call crime stoppers on 0800 triple five Okay, so this bloke, Kevin O'Loughlin, 30 years old, he's getting drunk at Horatio's Club on the 1st of May, 1993, and it didn't go well for him. Well, obviously, that's why he's on my show. But what happened to Kevin O'Loughlin? Well, it was a Saturday night, early Sunday morning. He got stabbed six times by person or persons unknown in the Montgomery Square Struggling to catch a breath, probably with his lungs full of blood, Kevin died at the entrance of Montgomery Square on, on the Hardy Street side. That's literally where the camera's pointed right now. Yet that's where he left the world. But how did things go so wrong for the half Irish, half Maori carpenter who ran his own small business? This episode of New Zealand Murder History Podcast will attempt to answer this question on what little information is available. So let's reference this one. Information taken from, but not limited to, NZ Herald website, DNA fails to provide new leads in murder case. And that one's available on www.nzherald.co.nz. Stuff.co.nz. Mystery remains. Murdered man Kevin O'Loughlin Nelson's unsolved homicide. 24th of June. 2017, written by Jessica Long, available on www.stuff.co.nz. Also, watch New Zealand Mysteries by TJ, The Unsolved Murders of Kevin O'Loughlin and Jordan Vodarius, Vodorius, available on youtube.com, uploaded on the 9th of June 2020. Stuff.co.nz article, Unsolved Murder in Car Park Still Baffles After 29 Years, 
written by Vanessa Phillips, 30th of April 2022, available on www.stuff.co.nz. NZ Herald article, Homicide Hotline Ringing Red Hot After DNA Found, written June the 2nd, 2005, available on www.nzherald.co.nz. So let's have a brief rundown on what we know. Now, despite different sources saying different things, it seems Kevin died just about where he was stabbed. Kevin had broken up with his lady, the mother of his daughter, and gone out for a night on the town, visiting a few hotel bars and clubs with a friend, Bill Marshall, later in the night. So, Saturday the 1st of May through to Sunday the 2nd. Anyway, Bill Marshall's now called it a night and gone home, and Kevin O'Loughlin, the half Maori, half Irish bloke, is drinking at a club called Horatio's. So that's down on Halifax Street, but anyway, it's not open anymore. He's wearing grey corduroy pants, a black jacket with white trim on the cuffs and pockets, and grey cowboy boots. At 3am he leaves the club on Halifax, walks down less than one block on Trafalgar, takes a right on Wakatu Lane. I think the proper pronunciation is actually Whakatu Lane in Māori, but anyway... From there, Kevin O'Loughlin cuts through the bus depot. Then he's in Montgomery Square from the Bridge Street side. So one street parallel um, that way. He walks through to Hardy Street and gets nailed at the entrance to Buxton Square. I read one article that said a blood trail ran from the Rutherford Street entrance to the, the car park, but I saw an interview with a cop Chris Gladstone on Unsolved Murder in Car Park Still Baffles After 29 Years by Vanessa Phillips. And that was the 30th of April 2022 on www.stuff.co.nz. It was just a short interview, but you guys can check that out if you like. And it sounds like Kevin died where he was attacked. But perhaps the killer left bloody footprints going through the tra to Trafalgar Street. Or he may have, the killer, if he was a man in fact, may have cut their hand on the knife by mistake. Yeah, Kevin was stuck with a lot of force, so that's a possibility. Um, and that would also explain the DNA profile the police were able to come up with in 2005. And that was 12 years later after the crime. So the big question is who stabbed Kevin O'Loughlin? And over what? Well, I heard over 90% of murders are done by someone who knows the victim. But is that true in this case? I mean, he's out drinking at a club. So could another Nelson local who had it in for Kevin have spotted him? Spotted him drunk as at the bar and thought, now's the time. Perfect time for payback. Made a dash back to their apartment or car to get a blade catch him on his own in the Montgomery Square car park and stab stab he's done make a run for it and disappear into the dark night without leaving much in the way of clues well maybe or what if some psycho just robbed Kevin someone saw the carpenter splashing cash on the bar buying drinks for people and thought yeah I'm gonna follow this fool at closing time catch him slipping in the car park and boom I'm gonna line my pockets but then when it comes to crunch time, boom, boom, psycho guy stabs up the unlucky half-Irish, half, half Māori bloke just to get some sick kicks, you know. Well, it's been done before, and Sonny Nelson isn't always the safe and sound, happy family place it's cracked up to be. Just depends, really. I used to work at New World, not Vanguard Street, the New World up in Stoke. And I remember this bloke, Carlton, I used to work with. Yeah, he was this big kind of dorky looking fella. He's funny, man. He was a cool dude. Anyway, me and him got on good. Okay, now I'm getting well off topic, but check this out anyway. It's pretty funny. So one night after work, and it couldn't have been that late because the supermarket shut at like 9.30 or something. Anyway, Carlton was helping this, um, helping this lady find her car keys in the car park. And some bloke he didn't even know 
came up and smashed him upside the head for no reason, knocked three of Carlton's front teeth out with one punch. So yeah, violent assaults do go down in Nelson for no reason. So what's funny about that, you say? Well, nothing at all, but check this out. So, <laughs> this is pretty bad. But uh, anyway, I wanted to cheer Carlton up, right? So, I was in the staff toilets one day, and I wrote on the wall, Carlton gives the meanest gummy blowjobs. <laughs> the boss didn't like it, eh? he was out to get me, he was writing it on our payslips, used to get payslips back then, it was 2004, you get them printed out, you know? And they had like little notes on everyone's payslip, if anyone knows anyone, anything about the graffiti in the uh, staff toilets, please tell management, and there's a, even though there's a small reward going and... <laughs> I mean, it's not the kind of thing I'd do these days, but in context, I think Carlton thought it was pretty funny. He had a bit of a sense, he had a bit of a uh, warped sense of humour for that kind of thing. So, yeah, anyway, I'm not really sure Kevin was half Irish. O'Loughlin sounds Irish to me, but he definitely was half Maori. Well, anyway, back to the story now. It wasn't about a robbery. Um, first off, Kevin was stabbed in the back and shoulder six or seven times. He had a cut on his forehead. I'm not certain if the cut to his forehead was a knife wound, like Kevin turned around during the attack and this bloke was taller than him and slashed him across his forehead. Uh, maybe, but it's more likely he just fell down during the altercation and busted his forehead on the ground or small signpost, you know, like one of them signposts over there. I mean... It's 29 years ago now, so it would have been a different signpost, but you get the picture. Um, you know, something like that. Some sources say six stab wounds and others say seven, but I think it's six plus the mark on Kevin's forehead. It's also strange, I find it strange anyway, that Kevin was stabbed six times in the back. See, I would have thought he might have spun around and fought the attacker and got stab wounds to his front as well. I mean, even in a struggle on the ground, Kevin would flip over, you know. It's it's hard for an attacker to be pinning Kevin with one hand and stabbing him with his free hand. Not impossible, just um, depends who he was up against, you know. Unless someone or multiple people had Kevin pinned down. It's also worth noting that I haven't read Kevin's autopsy. I'm just going off these articles I'm reading. And they may or may not be accurate. I have no reason to doubt them, but, you know, he may have been stabbed in the front, too. You know, I'm speculating now, but check this out. I wonder if it was a couple, a boyfriend and girlfriend, who killed Kevin. Like, the bloke had Kevin pinned down, and the girl stabbed him. It's just the kind of thing a boy-girl couple would do, as a team, you know? I mean, possibly it was a lesbian couple and the blokey girl had Kevin pinned down and the girly girl stabbed him. Could have been two gay blokes. Could have been Jack the Ripper for all I know. Just saying, six stab wounds to the back, possibly seven. That's odd, you know. Still deep stab wounds, so it was most likely a male. Now let's go back to the robbery theory. It doesn't look like an armed robbery. Most New Zealand robbers, they don't really want to stab people. They'd be more likely to call out. Hey, bro, I want your wallet. Give it, homie, or I'll stick you. You know, some shit like that. Also, Kevin was found with his wallet in his pocket, still lined with a little cash. Now, Kevin was a self-employed carpenter. And I wonder if he had done some cash work earlier in the week and missed the bank on Friday, you know? Did he have a stack of cash in an envelope or a roll of $50 notes, perhaps? Did he decide to pull it out to pay for his last round at the bar just trying to break a bigger note so that he had a 20 for the taxi home? Doesn't really seem to be a robbery, but, you know, can't rule it out completely. What about a gang initiation? Right, well, most New Zealand gangs, they, they aren't quite that nasty. Um, some have known to be, but... Even then, it's typically when older nasty gangsters set up one of their enemies to get hit by a prospect, you know? 
Like the time Big Punch hit Chris Crenn at Taranaki ways, you know? I mean, to hit a random Maori guy for no reason, it's more like something the white power would do, or a youth gang. Now, at a quick Google search, I can't find what gangs were active in Nelson in 1993, but off the top of my head, South Island Nazi Party were here, uh, also Maori Mafia, and possibly the Tribe Motorcycle Gang were, um, and the Lost Boys. But if the murder was gang related, it's more likely he pissed somebody off that night. Follow the victim out of the club and waste him in a place without much lighting. Yeah, that does sound like something a New Zealand gang would do, actually. Um, Kevin's mum and dad, they both mention that their son, well, he, he could be a bit big mouth at times, you know? And plus he was drinking that night. Maybe that's how it all went down. Thinking about it now, Kevin had split up with the mother of his daughter, but all accounts from that night were that Kevin was having a good one. No, I think he was spotted by someone in the club, someone who had an axe to grind, over God only knows. Another tradesman, perhaps? Maybe they were in business together and things went sour? Or what about some bloke whose girlfriend might have banged Kevin McLaughlin? Or at least this bloke thinks, he di uh, thinks she did. But in reality, Kevin was just friends with his girlfriend. You know, some he said, she said, bunch of rubbish. That's actually what I think probably happened. Or just something like that, you know. Not necessarily that, but something like that. Um, yeah, I say so because I believe Kevin was followed. Even if you look here at the crime scene, it's like, if his attacker was following him through the Buxton car park, which he was, or she was possibly, it's like he's getting closer and closer to where there's like heaps of light and more people and this person's tossing it up in their head like, hey, am I going to do something crazy? Am I really going to stab up Kevin McLaughlin? Now's my last chance. Oh, I better do it, you know, and then they do it right there. It's like they were following him. I, I just get the feeling he was followed anyway, put it that way. Anyway, I put 75% chance on that. 25% chance this was a gang thing. Maybe there was a high-ranking gang member that was at Horatio's club that night, and Kevin somehow crossed him. He told his boys to handle business, and that was that. If it was random stabbing, then it was either South Island Nazi Party or a youth gang, American Street Gang Blue or American Street Gang Red. I only throw 5% that this was just a lone wolf attacked by some serial psycho, you know? Because then you might expect to see other crimes with the same M.O. Well, that's it. That's my show. Like and subscribe. Will this crime ever be solved? Maybe. I think Nelson police know more than they're letting on. Until more evidence, witnesses pop up. And that can and does happen as people's loyalties change. Yeah, the code of silence surrounding this case makes me think gang related. But anyway, that's all for now. That's it, that's my show. Now let's have another look at Kevin O'Loughlin. Awful shame, you know? Check it out. Good looking bloke. Out for a night out. He had a bit of style too. Grey corduroy pants and grey cowboy boots. Kevin was cool. Have a good one, everybody. All the best. Chef.